Hello, friends. What is going on? It is your good buddy, Sam, and it's time for another exciting Max for Live tutorial. So uh, today we're going to continue where we left off um, in the bitterness tutorial series. Um, so what I want to do today is, well, last when last we left off, we were looking at this um, polyphonic. We just learned how to do polyphony. Um, so the idea was you take MIDI notes. Uh, as MIDI, MIDI notes come in, you prepend this MIDI note message to each one. And that goes to, when that goes to a poly tilde object, poly tilde is able to take those MIDI note messages and um, pass those out to uh, voices, instances of this patch that are not busy so that you're able to play multiple notes at the same time. Um, and we were doing that last time uh, with just a sawtooth oscillator and an ADSR. You multiply those together, it shapes the note, and you're able to play things that sound like this. Which is, you know, I mean, it's an achievement. It's not the greatest achievement in the world, but it is an achievement. Um, but today I want to talk about um, how to modulate this sound after you've created it um, using live params and talk a bit about how live params work with max params and also do a slightly more interesting, work with a slightly more interesting waveform than just a sawtooth oscillator. So let's start by uh, taking this simple polyphonic synth and saving a copy of it. So Command Shift S, and I'm going to save this as FB Synth. Not because it has anything to do with Facebook, but because it has to do with, well, you'll see. All right, it's feedback, but still, you'll see. Um, and the next thing to do is click down here on this little keynote thing, show containing project. And you'll see that this device contains fbsynth.amxt, which you would expect, but it also contains saw poly.maxpat. This is the um, max patch that this poly tilde object loads that is doing the saw tilde thing. Um, I'm going to save a copy of this as well. So uh, open up the saw poly, click down here on, um, I think it says modify read only, and then command shift S, and I'm going to save this as FB poly. And last thing to do is click here on this little file icon by FB poly, click and drag that into the list of patches loaded by the project so that the max for live device can actually find this FB poly thing. And you can actually delete saw poly from this as well since we're not going to be using that. And down here, this poly tilde, if you change this from saw poly to FB poly and then save this and jump back to live, if you've done everything correctly, we should still be able to play this thing, which we did, um, which we can, which means we did things correctly. So. With all that out of the way, let's make some more interesting sounds, shall we? Um, so you take a look at this patch, uh, you see this uh, sawtooth multiplied by this ADSR, and you think, come on, dude, sawtooth, we're going to be making a sawtooth synthesizer. Um, what is this, the, the 70s? What is this, the 20s? What is this, the 1720s? That we're going to be doing stuff this uh, ancient. Um, you're right, we can do stuff more interesting than that. And because this is max seven, let's get really interesting. Let's use this gen object that we've heard, that I've heard so much about. Um, so gen, in case you don't know, basically it lets you um, create MSP objects, um, by, but it lets you define MSP objects using a max-like language. This looks almost exactly like max, but um, Gen actually only has only supports certain objects. Um, but the cool thing is that when you lock this patch, it actually compiles down to something that um, is uh, basically equivalent to an MSP object. So it's much faster, and you can do cool stuff like single sample delay and other nice things. So anyway, um, now let's we've made this Gen. I double clicked it to open it, um, and yes, this is a Max for li or, or, or a live set that loads a max for live device, which contains a poly tilde patch, which itself has a gen sub patcher in it. Um, but it's not as bad as, or not as complicated, hopefully, as it maybe seems. So I'm just gonna modulate, or pff, I'm gonna change this gen patch so that it just contains a cycle object. Cycle is, of course, just a sine tone, or sine oscillator. Um, I'm gonna save this FB poly. 
And then back here in this FB synth, uh, I may need to save this as well. And then in live, if I play some notes, it's now referencing that gen patch and playing sine waves instead of the sawtooth waves. Um, cool, so let's uh, do some very simple, let's use a technique that anybody who's opened up a, anybody who's uh, ever held a patch cord in their life will know all about um, this signal processing technique, uh, FM synthesis, frequency modulation synthesis. So in this technique, the basic idea, we've got one sine tone oscillator here, we're going to modulate the frequency of this oscillator by another oscillator by adding them, uh, adding this, the carrier frequency, to this, the modulator. Um, the things that we can control in this, uh, this is the frequency of the carrier. We can also modulate the, or change the frequency of the modulator. And the last thing that's worth tweaking is the um, amplitude of the modulator, which reflects roughly the amount of modulation. Now, in this configuration, this is the frequency of the carrier, frequency of the modulator, the amplitude of the modulator. In fact, uh, these aren't necessarily, you'll find if you play around with uh, frequency modulation setup for a little bit, that these aren't actually the most interesting parameters to affect. Um, it's more important to talk about the ratio of the harmonic, the ratio of the carrier to the um, modulator. Um, this is what's called the modulation, sorry, the harmonic ratio. And it's also important to talk about the ratio of the amplitude of the modulator to the frequency of the modulator. Um, this is all a very complicated way of saying that what you want to be doing is multiplying the carrier by this, which will be the harmonic ratio. or harmonic ration, I guess. And this we will call the harm modulation index. Uh, and this I will, or to get what should go in here, we'll multiply this, the frequency of the um, modulator by the modulation index, and then multiply the output of the modulator by this value. So this is the FM synthesis setup that uh, should be most familiar and is most commonly used um, when people actually do FM synthesis. So now back out in this FB synth patch, I'll save this and also save this uh, FB poly object. You'll see the gen tilde object now has two more inlets um, because we added the in2 and in3 here. Um, and if we want to be able to control these from the master max for live device, I'm gonna add two more inlets here. I'm actually gonna make these DSP uh, inlets. So in tilde two and in tilde three so that we can control these parameters at audio rate. Save this, jump back out to the master FB synth patch. And then this poly should have two more inlets, uh, but it didn't reload automatically. So I'm just gonna delete and then undo delete to reload the FB poly patch. And we, sure enough, we have two more inlets. Cool, and now let's uh, make something so we can actually modulate these. I'm gonna make a live.dial and I'm going to change the long name. Uh, you'll see down here when you open up the inspector, there's this parameter called long name and short name. Short name is what you see above the object. Long name is the actual name of the parameter in live's parameter namespace. More on that in a bit. So we'll call this one harmonicity ratio and change the short name to ratio. And we'll make another dial here change its long name to modulation index and change the short name to index. And both of these uh, really want to take them in the range of zero to 10. And we'll change the unit style to float so that you can see the decimal value of each of these. And then if we just connect uh, ratio here and index here um, now, if I save this and, oh, let's see, we actually wanna be able to modulate these as well. So I'm gonna select both of them, um, 
Command Shift P to add them to the presentation. Command Option E to switch to presentation mode. And they should be there, but they're not. That's, let's try this one more time. Command Shift P to add these to presentation. Command Option E to go to presentation mode. Wonderful, there they are. So let's save this, come back to, or save this, close this. And now back in live, there they are, ratio and index. And if we start playing, with the index at zero, there's no um, FM. But if you start to increase the index, nothing happens. Don't, don't make me look bad in front of everybody, Max. Um, ratio and index going into this poly. In three, in two, into gen. These are going into gen correctly. So what's going on? Um, I think that, oh, you know what's happening? is um, Polly is expecting a signal input here, and I'm giving it a max message, not a signal. This is an easy fix, um, and in fact, it's not a bad idea since we want to control these at audio rate. Rather, rather than um, connecting the output of these directly to Polly, we can use this object called live.param tilde that actually takes the output of these objects and generates a signal from it, which is super useful. Um, it uh, means that we can modulate things like this that want to be modulated at a signal rate with uh, just dials like this. Um, so live.param takes one argument, which is the long name of the parameter you want to modulate. And this one, I think, was harmonicity ratio. And this one was modulation index. So we'll delete these patch chords, connect harmonicity ratio like so, modulation index like this. And now just to be sure, I want to make sure. Oh, look at that. You can see this live.param is actually outputting a signal that uh, has this value 5.03, which is the same as this ratio. Uh, dial up here. I can indeed change one by changing the other. So now, if I save this and close it, hopefully live will cooperate. Indeed it will. So that's pretty nifty, um, but I'm willing to bet that you're actually still not impressed because look at this uh, frequency modulation synthesis. Um, I can already hear, I can already see the YouTube comments now. Sam, um, really frequency modulation? You thought that was going to impress us? I thought this was the delicious tutorial series, not, you know, fucking Mavis Beacon teaches Max. Um, What's with this baby stuff? Well, uh, you're right, I, I appreciate that. Let's try making this a little bit more interesting um, by adding the promised feedback. Um, so I think feedback is a really cool thing to include in uh, frequency modulation. It certainly makes the synthesis a bit more interesting. And we can actually achieve that in gen here um, using this object called history. Um, history is sort of like, uh, it, it is a delay line, um, and it lets you do single sample delay, which for um, sound synthesis is really, really important. So I'm just gonna, the history takes two arguments. The first one is a name, and the second one is an initial value. The initial value doesn't really matter in our case. So I'm gonna make this history object just named uh, Bob. I'm gonna connect the output uh, of the whole oscillator to this history bob. And then up here, I'm going to uh, make another history object also called bob and add uh, the harmonicity, ra harmonicity ratio to bob like so. So this is the point where the feedback actually gets injected back into the system. And just so we have a little bit of control over the amount of feedback that's included, I'm also gonna make an in four. That will let us control the amount of feedback and we'll multiply the history value by this uh, fourth inlet before it goes into the harmonicity ratio and into the whole rest of this uh, system. 
So I think that's what we want there for this gen. I'm gonna save this again. There's our fourth inlet. Let's make an in tilde four. So we have yet another um, inlet to our poly tilde object. And then save this, come back to this patch. Poly tilde still only has three inlets, so let's delete and undo delete. There's the fourth inlet, super exciting. And see, I'll move this down a bit and add yet another live.dial. We'll call this one, we'll give this one the long name feedback and the short name feedback. And uh, make another live.param tilde. Only give it the argument feedback and connect this up like so. And now if we save this, close this, and jump back to, uh, it's not really where we want that dial, is it? Um, I forgot to move this dial in presentation mode. So let's shift to presentation mode, bring this dial over here, save, just save it this wide, save and close. And there it is, the feedback dial. Um, so let's see, let's set the index to one and then change this feedback a bit. Um, I really like the feedback dial because it has a really interesting and sometimes bizarre, if you make the index really high and the feedback really high. You get really horrible noise and I'm all about a synthesizer that at some values can sound smooth, maybe a bit boring and at crazier values, you know. can sound like a robot being tortured or something. Um, so that's uh, basically all that I want to do with the synthesizer. So the cool thing with these uh, live.dials is they're automatically included in live's um, parameter system. So uh, if you double click here to actually make a MIDI clip, or actually let's not do this. Let's, or, sorry, I'm so much shittier at live than I am at, uh, at max. So let's look at the notes here. Let's compose a little, a quick beautiful melody. Wow, that is okay. Let's change these back to normal values just for a second. Can you tell that uh, I'm the greatest composer of my generation with a melody like this? Let's see if this works. release is way too long on these. Yeah, 400 milliseconds for the release, are you kidding me? Um, should make another uh, in, we'll make it so that uh, in one, in two, so that messages to the second inlet go to the no, it's too complicated. All right, for now, we'll just make this release much shorter, like maybe 100 milliseconds. There we go. Cool. Um, and then what I wanted to do was if you click down here on this little E, you get the envelopes for these objects. And um, 
you'll see included here, uh, this is the most important part, is that feedback, harmonicity ratio, and modulation index, we can actually modulate each one of these over the course of this, uh, over the course of this clip, just like we could any live parameter. Well, maybe that melody is already starting to get a little bit annoying, um, but you get the idea of these uh, uh, dials that we set up here in Max um, become modulatable parameters within the live set. So that covers uh, frequency modulation with feedback and live parameters in the context of a live set, or in the context of a Max for Live object, I suppose. So that's all I want to talk about for this iteration. Next time, um, I don't know, I forget what I'm going to talk about next time, but uh, in any case, next time will be something interesting, hopefully, as well. Um, thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy, guys.